talking about measurement of biodiversity what we need to understand is that just like the definition of biodiversity or the ways in which we can express biodiversity there is no single way to measure how the biodiversity could be understood so for example just look at the two samples that you have on your screens sample a and sample b what do you see just try to count the number of species that you have count the number what you will see is there are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 in sample a and similarly you have 8 in sample b so if i just have to count the sheer number i know that there are 8 and 8 right so is this the right way can we say that okay the diversity of both the samples is the same one more thing that you can see here is there are three different kinds of species in sample a 1 2 and 3 and if you look at b what you see is there are two kinds of species so again can we say that a is more diverse than b because from the first just understand from the first way of counting since the numbers are 8 and 8 i can say that both are equally diverse if it was just about the numbers but if i'm counting different kinds of species then in that case what do you see you see that you have three different species in sample a and you have two different species in sample b then in that case perhaps i can say that sample a is more diverse than sample b now try to understand one more concept here what do you see in sample a you see there is one butterfly you see that there is one small insect like a beetle and you see that there is another wasp or something that looks like a dragonfly so there are three different species here but at the same time what i see is that number of butterflies is six there are six butterflies only one of this species and only one of this species so in this case if we try to compare this with sample b what do you see here you see that you have four of butterflies and you have four of probably ants right but let's say we have to compare sample a and sample b what would we do we have sample a and b number of species in both the cases 8 and 8 variety of species sample a has 3 sample b has 2 and if i talk about the evenness we saw the distribution in a was 6 1 and 1 whereas in b it was 4 and 4 so it is more even so this is one advantage that b has over a and this is talking about number of species number of different kinds of species a has an advantage over b so depending on how i want to measure it depending on what kind of indices i am trying to choose depending on that i'll see that probably somebody will say that a is better somebody will say b is better but going by general acceptance that we have you will see that normally we'll say that b is a better sample as compared to sample a and why is that first is because numbers being the same what we see is that it is more evenly distributed an evenly distributed ecosystem would mean that it is an ecosystem that may survive longer because what you see in sample a is that there are six butterflies which will obviously overtake all the other organisms that are there they will start to compete for food with different organisms the other organisms the other species will perhaps not be able to survive for very long given that their numbers are very low they will not be able to survive for a very long period of time at the same time sample b will see a proper coexistence because the numbers are similar and because the numbers are similar this is one sample that may survive for a longer duration of time so that's why when i measure biodiversity should i say sample a is better than sample b or b is better than a my answer would go with b because it is more evenly distributed given that the number of species in both the cases were the same so that also becomes a factor so when you try to measure biodiversity it's not only about the numbers you cannot just go by numbers because for example let's say one sample has 100 different kinds of animals just the sheer numbers i'm talking about and the other has 80 but 80 is more evenly distributed as compared to 100 then in that case perhaps we'll try to go with 80 because it has a higher chance of survival so this is again something that needs to be counted upon but when we discuss 
the measurement there are two major components that we need to discuss one the number of entities and second the degree of difference and that is basically something that we were talking about which is the evenness that we see in a given ecosystem so these are the two important parameters that always have to be kept in mind and based on these two concepts what we see is we generally define the indices of measurement and these indices will be species richness species evenness and taxonomical indices now when we talk about taxonomical indices basically we are talking about the genetics and we are also trying to take genetic diversity into account because when you talk about species richness or even when you are talking about evenness in both the cases we are looking at just the species diversity but we have read this that only species diversity doesn't matter you also have ecosystem diversity and you also have genetic biodiversity both have to be taken into account and since we are talking about one single ecosystem ecosystem biodiversity does not come into account here but apart from species diversity we have to take into account the genetic diversity as well so for that very purpose looking into taxonomical indices also become very very important so when we try to measure biodiversity these are three basic indices that we'll try to follow one the number of species that is species richness second evenness of species distribution and third taxonomical indices these are the three major indices that have to be taken into account and on the basis of that we come to a concept which is called as scales of biodiversity or when we talk about measurement of biodiversity these are three important concepts that you need to understand alpha beta and gamma diversity and how do we define them when we are trying to measure biodiversity in a given region so what do you see when you look at alpha on your screens if you see alpha for let me call this as a b and c when we look at a what do you see you have four different kinds of species and because of that we are taking alpha is equal to 4 if you look at this you have three different kinds of species the blue dot has been repeated that's why i'm counting three different species that's why alpha is equal to 3 and when we look at the third sample that is sample c what do you see are two different kinds of species and that's why the value of alpha will be 2 so what is alpha alpha is basically giving you the measurement of different kinds of species which are present in a given ecosystem correct then comes the second concept that is beta diversity now how do we measure beta diversity what you see is that between sample a and sample b beta diversity has been given as 3 so what exactly does beta diversity mean here now what you see here is that there are two species which are common in sample a and sample b what are these one is this red triangle and second is the blue circle so what do you see you see that these two are common these two are common so since these two are common what we do in beta diversity is we try to look at different variants of species for example the ones which are not common so what do you see this star is not common this star is present only in sample a similarly this yellow square is present only in sample a and this green square is present only in sample b so that's why the beta diversity between a and b is 3 similarly try to look at sample b and sample c what do you see you will see that there is nothing that is common for example these three species that you have in sample b and the two species that you have in sample c they have nothing in common so in that case the beta diversity will be counted as 3 from here and 2 from here the beta will become as 5 if you look at the beta diversity between sample a and sample c what do you see you can observe that this yellow square is common in both of these so we will not count the yellow square what we will count we'll count the star we'll count this triangle we'll count this blue circle and we'll count this green circle so the beta diversity between a and c becomes 4 so this is how you do a study of beta diversity the beta diversity will give you the measurement between two different ecosystems 
so that's why that becomes another level of measurement so first measurement is happening within the ecosystem and the second measurement is happening between two given ecosystems now comes the third kind of diversity which is called as the gamma diversity and what do we mean by gamma diversity let's try to understand so what we see is the gamma diversity has been given as 6 so why is it 6 try to understand what we do here is basically we count the total number of all the different kinds of species that are present here. For example, you have the star 1, you have the red triangle 2, you have the blue circle 3, you have the yellow square 4, you have the green square which is the fifth one and you have the green circle which is the sixth one. So all the three different ecosystems combined, we have a total of six different species and that's why when we are looking at comparative study of all the ecosystems taken together in a given area in that case we call it as gamma diversity so you have alpha diversity which is only in a given ecosystem then you have beta which does a comparison between two different ecosystems and then you have gamma which perhaps can take all the ecosystems in a given geographical area or it can probably take the entire biome, it can take the entire biosphere. In that case, you will see that gamma diversity becomes the third way in which measurement of biodiversity mm. is done. So that's why these three become different scales of diversity. This is why we are calling it scales because they are happening at different scales, right? One alpha is happening at a very small scale, beta at a bigger scale and gamma at much larger scale. That's why these are called as scales of diversity. And usually, you'll see that whenever you study, wherever you see or in any of the sources, you'll see that measurement of diversity, they'll directly tell you that these three are the ways in which we measure the diversity. Now, ultimately, what we are looking at is basically even after talking about evenness, talking about the quality, talking about every other aspect of measuring biodiversity, we still are emphasizing a lot on the numbers or in other ways, we are emphasizing a lot on species richness. That is, in a given ecosystem, in a given region, what is the number of different kinds of species that are present? That becomes the most important factor and that happens for a multiple number of reasons. For example, first, the practical application. Now, why are we talking about practical application? We are talking about practical application is because you look at the numbers. Looking at the numbers and trying to analyze a given region or a given ecosystem is easy. Let's say we were talking about qualitative measurement. For example, let's say we start to consider the mass of different kinds of species, meaning how much they weigh. We can talk about an elephant and we can talk about an ant. And if we talk about an elephant and an ant, you perhaps will see that the numbers of ants are greater, much, much greater as compared to the number of elephants in a given ecosystem. So that happens because of the variation in mass that you have between these species. And if you go by ecological measurements, you will see that if the masses of a given species are higher, in that case, their numbers are usually lower. The species which have very less mass are very high in number. So this becomes one qualitative measurement, right? We can talk about the qualitative measurement on the basis of mass. We can talk about on the basis of their behavior. We can talk about on the basis of their food habits. So all these are qualitative measurements which perhaps will not be a good idea to look at the biodiversity of a given region or a given ecosystem. So practically speaking, if you know the numbers, if you know the variants in the given ecosystem as per the species richness, in that case we'll be able to study them in a proper manner, we'll be able to look at them from scientific perspective in a much better manner. So that's why Looking at practical sites, you will always see that species richness becomes a very important concept. Then after that, existing information. We have museums, we have scientific research papers, we have all the kinds of details that have been taken since ages and most of it has happened on the basis of the numbers. It has happened on the basis of the species richness which usually was seen in the terms of numbers. So that's why even if you talk about the existing information, it mostly exists as the numbers in a given area or in a given ecosystem. And that's why it also becomes a very important area why species richness is used. 
then comes surrogacy so numbers will tell you how easy or difficult would the breeding be for a given organism if we know the numbers are good if we know the males and female population is good enough then in that case we know that the surrogacy will be easier the breeding will be easier and for the species to survive longer in the given ecosystem it would be easier but at the same time if we know that their numbers are less then we also realize that something has to be done about their numbers we realize that we need to increase their numbers in one way or the other and that's why you see that whenever you see that there are species which are dwindling in numbers where the numbers are falling in such a scenario we always see that we take certain steps so that their breeding can be enhanced so that an increase in their population is possible and in what ways we can make it possible we try to do any kind of study and any kind of research on that so that's why from the point of view of surrogacy or the point of view of breeding also species numbers or species richness becomes a very important concept then wide application in what sense are we talking about wide application talk about for example political discourse or let's say we are talking about policies that a perhaps a government would take so all these will also be easier if they are based on the numbers if they are based on species richness that is coming from these numbers alpha beta and gamma diversity numbers that we discussed so from all these perspectives also we look at the fact that species richness becomes a very important way in which measurement can be done apart from that if we look at the qualitative measurements then perhaps they are not very feasible practically looking at all these kind of areas where we might face one issue or the other if we were not looking at the numbers or the richness in the variety of species so that's why species richness is the most important actually we call it as most important currency when we look at the measurement of biodiversity right so this is about species richness but at the same time what also happens is that species richness has certain limitations when it comes to measuring it most important one is basically the definition of species itself there are a dozen or more different kinds of ways in which we define a species so we cannot say that this single way is the right way or is the most important way most correct way to define what a species could be on the basis of that because the definitions of species have changed because there are many ways in which we use the definition because of that we see that species can be defined in various manners so the same species could be named differently so we don't even know after that whether or not we have defined them correctly or whether or not they are being taken into account carefully because in that case species richness numbers would change we might call the same a as b and then when we start measuring biodiversity perhaps a and b in one study will be seen as two different species and same a and b will be seen as one single species in some of the study it also depends on how the definition of species was done how did we try to define species so this becomes one ambiguous area then after that we have different kinds of diversity right for example you know that there is something called as genetic diversity just try to remember the image that we had taken for different kinds of banana right i had shown you one figure where there were four five different kinds of banana now just think of that image do i call every one of these banana as one single species or should i consider these as different species because this depends on how i am trying to define diversity if i am defining diversity on the basis of species if it is species diversity then in that case it's all the same species it's banana but at the same time if i am looking at genetic diversity then there are four different kinds of species that i am looking at there are four different kinds of diversity that i am looking at four different variants of the same species that i am looking at so should i count them as four should i count them as one this becomes another question that needs to be answered many a times when we are looking at species diversity you just talk about anything let's say even if we talk about rajma there are different varieties of rajma seeds that you see all across india there is the kashmiri variant there is the punjabi variant there is another variant there are so many variants of just one rajma that you eat in your food so you never know how exactly 
the things would change how exactly the definitions change and at what level are we looking at the diversity and because of all these problems also there are certain limitations to measuring biodiversity but nevertheless what we see is if we look at all the positives and all the negatives of different ways in which measurement of biodiversity can be done in that case you will always find that species richness becomes the best way to define best way to measure biodiversity so that's why you have to understand it from this point of view that although there are limitations to measuring biodiversity with respect to species richness still this is the best way to define it so measurement of diversity why it is difficult what are the different ways in which we do it and why species richness is the most important way to do it these are few of the concepts that you can try to understand from this perspective